Thanks, Goose. In the first Dark Siders, you played as War, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, charged with keeping the balance between good and evil in the universe. Pabadon! War has also been accused of triggering the current apocalypse by the Charred Council, so they locked him up. I answer the call. I like the first Dark Siders hex. It didn't do anything amazing, but it did a lot of different things very well. It too. I mean, it borrowed a lot of stuff from other games, namely God of War, but it still felt like it had its own identity. The sequel is set in the same time frame, except now you're in the shoes of the one and only Death, who is out to clear his brother War's name and restore humanity. I must restore humanity to redeem War. It's a complicated storyline and it can be hard to follow even with that previously on. Yeah, we've seen the devs talking about how hard it is creating a fiction from scratch and starting with a blank slate, but at the same time it's fascinating and interesting because they've got free reign of this entire universe and mythology and you can tell they're having fun with it. It's beyond my help, horseman. Do your worst. And just like the last game, it's full of fleshed out and really interesting characters. Almost everyone's interesting. Unfortunately, just like the first game, I thought that the main character, in this case Death, is pretty blank. You are not welcome here. Pity. I was starting to enjoy the atmosphere. It's got a cool mask, I guess. It's a pretty cool mask. Plus saves on mouth animation. <laughs> yes. And what is your use as a doorstop? After an exciting introduction, your journey will take you to the land of the Makers. Giant dwarfs is the best way to describe them. They're fighting a corruption in the land and losing the battle. If Death agrees to help cleanse the corruption, then they agree to help him find his way to the Tree of Life, which is a destiny portal of sorts. They have opened up the environments a little bit, which is nice, and I think they're more interesting to look at than the last game. You'll soon get into the groove of lever opening and ball pushing as you move through giant temples and fortresses, solving a variety of puzzles and fighting goons. Almost everything you're doing is to find a key or find a way to unlock a door and push on. As much as I was enjoying these puzzles, I found this whole first section to be way too heavy on puzzles and just nowhere near enough fighting. Give me some XP fodder. Yeah, they're well constructed puzzles though. It can be a little frustrating if you miss an explodey ball that you need for a puzzle or a lever you haven't pulled, but there's a masterful learning curve as the game opens up more mechanics and acrobatics to you just when you need them most. There's also some really clever ideas, especially when you start using explosions to push objects under doors or move things around. I imagine if you went away for a week and then came back to this and tried to figure out where you're up to, it would be quite confusing, but in general, I really enjoyed the puzzle section. We recently spoke to Jay Fitzlove, who's a producer at Visual Games, about the differences between war and death and how they move and fight in each of the games. War was slow, you know, and he could climb walls, but it'd be like him just like slowly like lumbering his way up or climbing, you know, just strength and powering its way through. Death is a lot more agile, so he'll jump up, skitter up, run across things. And this was another one kind of a side effect we didn't realize is once we had that character that could do all these fast, quick moves, wall runs, you know, get up to higher places, it allowed us to design not only bigger levels horizontally, but also uh, vertically. So we have a lot more height to our dungeon design now. And you can see that full interview on the website. God, he's so fast, isn't he, Death? I mean, moving about as him is just a joy. Yeah, he is very quick and it's so polished, that movement system. The grapple can be a little fiddly at times, but it is also useful in combat for pulling enemies towards you. I was having an okay time in the Maker's Area Hex, but then seven or eight hours in, things changed dramatically. <laughs> definitely kicks up a notch here. You'll be smashing your way through tons of skellies and other beasties and meeting more interesting characters with huge tasks to set you in exchange for their help. I will grant your request. Find my three dead lords and wake them from their slumber. Combat is a mixture of weapon types, magic and combos. Controls are very responsive. Your main weapons are dual scythes, which are brutal and always fun. But you also have a choice of mixing up your secondary weapon with giant axes, which are good for wide damage, hammers, which are brutal for knocking enemies about, and there's giant swords for thrusting, and some one-on-one -on -one weapons as well. 
So there are lots of options when it comes to demon smashing, but they're all quite fun and balanced. There's also a lock-on for a more direct attack, and you'll really need to do this in boss fights because they're heavy on evade, but mix things up just enough. I, I love those boss fights, but I really struggled with the combos in them, Bajo. Yeah, me too, Hex. And, and along with all the magic and evading and holding charged attacks, I just could not get those delays right. It's so hard to remember. I think if you really trained hard enough, you could get really good at them, but they're just not as intuitive as other games we've played. And this really comes down to the animations, not telegraphing well enough when to do your next attack in a string of combos. Still, it's exciting and engaging combat, and enemies take hits so well, and there's explosions and... Ah. <laughs> I love it when your death form comes out to play. And you can also activate Reaper form, which lets you destroy a whole bunch of enemies for a time, although I kept forgetting that I had that. And, you know, the more skills you buy and the more points you put into your tree, the more fun combat gets all around. And this isn't a short game either, so you've got heaps of time to experiment and play around. And if there's one thing that's going to keep you playing endless hours, it's the loot. There are chests at every turn here, just filled with gear and gold. Loot! It's pretty much treasure porn. Oh, baby. off extra gear, but every now and again you'll get a possessed weapon, which you can upgrade yourself by feeding it other gear. Fresh merchandise. It's a pretty big trade-off though, and I'm not sure it's worth doing early on considering how much gold gear is worth, but I always love it when gear is represented on your character. Yeah, me too. And I just love running with that giant hammer out. Who's gonna get my hammer? You are. There are some online features we couldn't test out, but we did play with The Crucible, which is a, a wave mode where you can go up against heaps and heaps of enemies coming at you at once and then get rewards. It's pretty tough, though. What did you think of the visuals, Hex? I quite like that Warcraft-style character design, and there are some beautiful moments with huge creatures lumbering about, and even a Lord of the Rings sort of Ent-style homage. It is a mixed bag, though. I mean, a lot of design is reused, but they still do a good job of keeping each area feeling different. It's only when you get stuck somewhere that you start to get a bit sick of the look of a zone. I think the whole thing is a bit visually dated, technically as well. We played this on all platforms, PC, PS3 and 360. And there is a slight jittery feel to the whole game. This is in part with the camera being so rigidly fixed on you that there's no ebb and flow. You need that dead zone so it's not jumping all over the place. It's almost too responsive. The console hardware struggles a little bit. There is a bit of screen tearing, which I found distracting. And happily, you don't have that on the PC version. And you've got V-Sync as well. But the textures aren't any better on the PC version. So I just I, know, I wish the whole thing was a bit sharper and a bit more detailed. The best part about the PC version is that you don't get any menu lag when you're flipping between all of the menus. And there is a bit of that on the console, which I found frustrating. You with your frame rates and your loading. I feel like you labor this point a little bit too much, Barger. PC Master Race, Hex. Yeah. This stuff's important. Whatever. <laughs> I know none of this. How is it I have remained so blind? Uh, look, I really liked the painterly look to the backdrops, though. I think even though it's a 2D background, they really made that work. Just like the last game, it's a very well-made adventure. It's just nothing we haven't really seen before. But look, if you can let that go, I think you'll have a really good time with this. And I'm giving it eight. We should also mention the music and score, which is just beautiful. I stay with this for the interesting characters and dialogue, and also that combat is spectacular to look at, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10 as well. <laughs> <laughs>